Hi and welcome students. Today's tutorial will be covering Microsoft Access 2016 and I'm going to be going over six different guidelines for creating good databases. Let's go ahead and get started. So I have a database right here and it has two tables on it. I'm going to use these two tables to explain the guidelines as we move forward. We're basically going to learn the guidelines for designing databases and setting field properties. So let's go ahead and begin. So you will see that I have two databases here and the first guideline that I want to go over is identifying all all the fields needed to produce the required information. All right, so let's say I take a look at this first table right here, and let's look at the fields in particular. Are all of these fields the information that I need for textbooks? So you'll see I have two tables, textbooks and publishers. This should all relate to textbooks here. Textbook ID, textbook name, courses, number of books, price per book, and publisher ID. Similar, to the publishers table, this contains only the information related to the publishers, like their name, their ID, and all of their uh, contact information. Okay, so again, identifying all the fields needed to uh, produce the required information is very important. All right, so step number two is to organize each piece of data into its smallest and most useful part. Let's take the uh, textbook area here, and or a textbook table, and we have a textbook name, the course it's related to. Now, this could easily be combined onto one, right? Bio 100, basic anatomy and physiology. But what happens if two courses use the same textbook, or if one textbook uses two courses? Rather than combining them into larger uh, individual fields, a good practice is to separate them, right? So if I had uh, contacts that say our publishers here, and I had their first and last name, I'd want to split that into two columns. That way I can use that uh, those two columns for sorting and filtering um, instead of just putting their names onto one line. So again, into its smallest and most useful part is very important. The next one is to group field, uh, related fields into tables. Okay, uh, By related fields, I mean that in my publishers table, I shouldn't really have a bunch of textbook information. Okay, you notice that in the publisher table here, I have the name of the publisher and I have their contact information. I don't have what textbooks they've created in here because that would make my uh, table extremely long uh, and extremely complicated. Instead, I just have the information with the publishers. Should I want to include textbook information, I could create a relationship between the tables like I already have so that I could see what textbooks they produce, but I definitely want to create that on a separate textbooks table rather than doing it on this table in particular. Okay, The next thing is to de determine each table's primary key. All right, A primary key, I do have a video on this and I'll link it at the end, uh, but a primary key is basically your unique identifier. So something that's not going to repeat itself. So uh, when I used to work in an accounting firm, we had different cases. And so each case would have its own case number. Therefore, it would never repeat itself. That made a good primary key. For my students in my classes, they all have individual student ID numbers. That's a great primary key because it never repeats itself. Now, if I did a primary key based off of, say, my students' last names, well, that's not going to be good because I'll have students that will have the same last name as other students. Therefore, if I tried to type in that duplicate value, it would not work. Okay, And so figure out what your primary key is. And that's the fourth step. The next step, which is step number five, is to include a common field in related tables. All right, so what does that mean? That means that, let's say I have textbooks and publishers. These are related tables because the publishers create the textbooks. So you'll see in here, I have a publisher ID as a primary key in this publishers table. But then in my textbooks table, I have uh, a publisher ID column right over here. Now this is, a, is not a primary key in this table because uh, one publisher can create multiple textbooks, right? So we could see publisher 1002 has two textbooks right here. Of course publishers can create multiple textbooks. Now this, what this does is it allows me to then create a relationship between the tables. So for instance, in my external data Data tab, or sorry, my database tools tab, if I went to my relationships and clicked all relationships, I could see a relationship created right here, and I'll go ahead and show you guys, uh, between publishers and textbooks that says one publisher ID to many publisher ID, meaning one publisher can create many textbooks. 
And when I create that relationship, it gives me this nice little uh, cascade option right here to basically hit the plus sign and see the textbooks related to the publisher all on the publisher's table. So again, finding the common field in your related tables is very, very important. So I definitely want to include that publisher ID field in both of my tables. So I'm not going to save the changes to that. And so here we go. Uh, the next thing is to avoid data redundancy. Okay, now you do, you do want to create a common field uh, in your related tables, but you don't want to have every single field be related because then you're just going to be repeating all of your data, right? So you'll notice inside my textbooks here, uh, I have the price per book, the name of the book, all this information. None of that information is repeated in my publisher's table. There's nothing there that repeats or moves over uh, from table to table. Again, that would be repeating data for really just the the reason of repeating data there's no point on doing that so instead the only data that I include is the common field which is the publisher ID and the publisher ID alright so finally uh, going into the last one here it's to determine the properties for each field uh, you need to identify the properties or characteristics of each field to figure out how things are displayed right so right here say my price per book when I get that field going I want to go to my table tools fields tab and I want to go to formatting group right here and make that a currency field right I want that to be a currency field because it's a dollar value, right? Just like how I would want number of books to be a number data type, right? Understanding what your fields display and the best way to set up the formatting and set up the properties for those fields is another extremely uh, important guideline to creating a good database. So uh, hopefully this video has helped you out on a little bit expla about explaining about uh, what you're going to put into your databases as well as how you're going to set them up. And hopefully those six tips there uh, helped you out and kind of give you a bit of a foundation for creating your future databases. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to know more about Microsoft Access, please check out my Access playlist and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.